Now, as demonstrated in a separate video, Telnet sends traffic in clear text and passwords and data can easily be captured on the wire. So it's better to use SSH. So as an example, I'll capture the traffic between router one and router two. And for comparison, I'll do a Telnet to router two from router one and log in with my username and password. In Wireshark, I can simply filter for Telnet. And in the output, I'll be able to capture the password, which is CI. SCO, in other words, Cisco. But more than that, if the user typed a command such as show run and looked at the running config of the router or did any kind of configuration, all of that is sent in clear text. So a hacker could simply search for the data. So there is an example is the prompt of the router after login and searching through the data we can see show run. And here's the current config of the router. So we're able to view the full configuration of the router. So as an example, there's an IP address on an interface. Scrolling down, more configuration. If there were passwords on the console, or other ports, we'd be able to see those passwords. So as an example, here's the password on the VTY line. I could also simply look at the TCP session and the full configuration of the router is simply displayed through Wireshark. So not a great way to manage devices when someone sniffing the network can capture the traffic. This is more of a problem when you're using a public network such as the internet than your local network. But it's important to be aware that Telnet sends traffic in clear text. So we wanna enable secure shell or SSH. And to do that, we firstly have to specify a host name. It cannot be the default of switch or router. The name was R2, but I've reset it just for completeness to show you the command. So you have to set a host name and then you have to specify a domain name, which is required for the generation of keys. So specify some kind of domain name. I'll use cisco.com. You have to have a username. Now I've already configured a username of David and a password, but I'll just do that again for completeness. And then we have to generate keys. So crypto key generate. RSA, specify modulus, and then specify size. That should have been 1024, so let me do that again. The larger the size of the key, the more secure the transmission of data. So the modulus size is from 360 to 2048. And once again, I specified 1024. The router will then generate what are called private and public keys so as you can see here, the keys are gonna be replaced because I'm regenerating them. A private key means a key that you don't share. It's private to yourself. A public key is derived from a private key and that's what you share with everyone else in secure communications. So if you wanna send something to me that no one else can read, you would encrypt it with my public key, which means that only my private key can decrypt it. If I wanna send something to you that only you can read, I would encrypt it with your public key and only your private key can decrypt it. A public key is derived from a private key. Something encrypted with a public key can only be decrypted by the relevant private key. So if you encrypt something with my public key, only my private key can decrypt it. Now on the VTY lines, we can specify transport input and specify a protocol. Now I'll specify Telnet and SSH. For security reasons, you may only want to allow SSH rather than Telnet and SSH. 
specify login local so that the local username and password database is used and then specify a version of SSH. Version two is more secure than version one. Show IP SSH. We can see that SSH is now enabled. Show SSH. There are no connections at the moment. Now I can still Telnet to the router because we allowed Telnet sessions, but if we did the following, line VTY04, transport input SSH, Telnet sessions would no longer be allowed. So show run pipe begin VTY. We're using login local, so this is not required. We are only allowing SSH sessions and inactive sessions will time out after five minutes. So SSH, we have a few options. I'm gonna specify 10.1.1.2. Notice no user is specified. We have to specify a user, so I'm gonna say David, and then the IP address of the router. Now I can log in. In Wireshark, we're still capturing. So if we search for SSH now, we can see SSH traffic. We can see the encryption used. In this case, it's AES, HMAC SHA-1. Don't worry too much about that at the moment. That's discussed in more detail in the VPN section. There's some key exchanges taking place. Diffie-Hellman keys are used here. So we can see all the negotiation between the two devices. But once that's taken place, we won't be able to see the data. Notice the data is encrypted. So as an example, I'll type show run. There's the full running config. In Wireshark, we can't see the data. We just see encrypted output here. So a hacker would not be able to view the data. The hacker would only know that there's an SSH session from one device to the other. So in other words, in this example, 10.1.1.1 is SSHing to 10.1.1.2. The source port number is this. The destination port number is 22. In other words, SSH. Notice how that is different to a Telnet session. In a Telnet session, we can see all the data in clear text. So it's much better to use SSH and it's better to restrict access to your devices to the use of SSH. Putty is free software that you can download from the internet and it supports both Telnet and SSH, but uses SSH by default. So if you're on a Windows machine, download PuTTY. If you're using a Mac or a Linux machine, SSH is built into the operating system. If you're on a router or a switch, you can simply use the SSH client on the Cisco device. So let's SSH back from router one to router two. Put in the password, I've logged in, show IP SSH. We can see that the version of SSH is version two once again, show SSH. We can see that a session has been started by username David, in connection, out connection. We can see the encryption, AES 128 bit encryption and authentication is SHA-1. SHA is a hashing algorithm similar to MD5. AES is an encryption algorithm similar to DES or triple DES, but it's a lot better than those protocols. No SSH version one server is running, only version two is running, and we have these connections to the router. When I log out, show SSH, we can see that no SSH connections are running. Once again, in Wireshark, everything is encrypted. So we can see the encrypted packet, but we can't see any data 
that makes up that encrypted packet.